So you've decided to upgrade from your kit lens and you wanna get the best video quality possible, but you don't wanna to spend too much money. Well, today we're gonna to talk about what I think are the best budget lenses that you could find. Let's save some money. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. And welcome back to budget video production. Still, we're still thinking of a cool name for it. I, it takes me some time to come up with cool names for things. So today we're gonna talk about what I think is the best budget lens you can find. And the cool thing about that is, it's not necessarily, as you can see here, we've got a lot of lenses out here. It's not necessarily one specific lens. I think it's more of a type of lens that can give you really good image quality, really nice shallow depth of field, and they're seriously the cheapest ones out there. And what I think, you probably saw from the title or the thumbnail, I'm not sure how I'm gonna word it yet, but it's the 50 millimeter 1.8 equivalent. Every single camera out there has a 50 millimeter 1.8 equivalent, and generally, they are very budget. They'll, they'll just do good things for your wallet because they don't cost too much. Now, pulling it back real quick, uh, since this is budget video production, the audience for this is not necessarily camera experts because camera experts you probably know all you need to know about what focal length you want and where to save some money. So I wanna mention really quickly, we're gonna go over a quick focal length class. Ding! Focal length class in session. Now you might be wondering to yourself, Everyday Dad, you're saying 50 millimeter 1.8. You've got a 50 millimeter, a 25 millimeter, a 30 millimeter, a 32 millimeter. They're all 50 millimeter. How does that work? Well, Science. So the Nikon Z6 is a full frame camera. Now what full frame mean, it doesn't just mean good, no matter what the internet and online camera forums say, full frame's not just the best because. Uh, basically what that means is the sensor size in this is one. So imagine this is a one times crop, which means whatever lens you put on this camera, its focal length will be the focal length that you actually see. So if I put a 50 millimeter lens on this, it will be 50 millimeters. If I put a 35 millimeter lens, like this guy, it will be a 35 millimeter equivalent. Now, other kinds of cameras have different kinds of crops. So this Lumix G85, by the way, which is my favorite camera, and I'm sad that we're doing the focal length class right now because I would prefer it be recording right now, but this is a micro four third sensor. So what that means is this has a two times crop. So this 25 millimeter, when you put it on here, will act like a 50 millimeter. And if we go to extrapolate that a little more, it is class, we gotta use fancy words. The two cameras I'm currently recording on are APS-C crop bodies, so they have a 1.5 times crop. So this 30 millimeter and that 32-ish, uh, they will end up being a 50 millimeter equivalent. Now, what makes these such a good focal length? I love 50 millimeter. This is a 50, what you're seeing right here is a 50 millimeter equivalent. 50 millimeter started off as my very first favorite. It's kind of still up there on the top. I, I'm starting to really like 35 millimeter, which is what this is. Um, but why 50 millimeter is so good? For one, you can get these lenses. So this is the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 that you can get for under hundred bucks, easy. But what's nice about this is it gives you a 1.8, so that's a very fast, very shallow depth of field if you put this on a full frame camera. Like, you can get incredibly, like you see right here, this shallow depth of field, that's on a 1.4 full frame prime lens, and it's not on a prime body. So you could get even shallower when you put this sucker on a full frame camera. And again, if you wanna save even more money, you can get a cheap knockoff. This is a Young Yao, uh, 50 millimeter 1.8 for Canon EF lens. And we can't actually use this, because if you remember the video I made, I broke it. Uh, you can see all the scratches on the glass when we did the drop test. But you can even get you can get this for even cheaper than that, and the image quality is pretty good. I mean, if you're spending this kind of money, it's okay. The autofocus works great. We tried it on a Canon M50, and it worked really, worked shockingly well when you adapt it. Canon EF 1.8, you can go so good. So good. But you're doing crop body stuff. Well, we'll move the kit lenses. Kit lens demonstration. But you decide you want uh, to be on a Micro Four Thirds camera because you like stuff like the Lumix G85, which is a fantastic camera. The 25 millimeter, this is one of my favorite lenses of all time. The 25 millimeter 1.7. Look how small this thing is. This is a teeny tiny lens, but it also gives you that 50 millimeter equivalent with roughly, I mean, look at that. It's way smaller than the Canon equivalent. It doesn't have the same, you know, quality of autofocus because for some reason, Micro Four Thirds cameras have decided that they, especially the budget ones, have decided that they don't want to have decent autofocus. 
Um, but look, it's small, it's compact, it works really well. So we are gonna go outside. Like I want you to know that I'm not just showing you these right now. We're gonna hop outside here in a second so I can show you how all of these look. You can get this one for also about a hundred bucks. You can find them used for less than a hundred bucks. They're 150 brand new, but it's still a very valuable lens. And if you do wanna get a little bit shallower, you wanna make it even nicer, you can go with it. Now this is a little bit more expensive. I'm using this more as like a demonstration because I happen to have it. Uh, but there generally there's a 50 millimeter 1.8 equivalent and then there's the nicer 1.4 equivalent and then there's the crazy expensive and mind-blowingly uh, 1.2 equivalents. We're not talking about those today. Those are way outside the uh, realm of budget video production. Uh, but this is like the step up. This is the Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4 for Sony E-mount. And I use this one all the time on my A6400. And this will also give you a very nice even shallower depth of field, but still giving you that good 50 millimeter equivalent. And you can find these for like 300 bucks. So the, the thing that I like so much about the 50 millimeter equivalent is it's really good value for money. It is approximately what the human eye sees. So what you see, like the center most in focus of your vision is about 50 millimeter. But for the purposes of this video, 50 millimeter is just, it's good, it's natural. It makes every, it doesn't give you like the weird wide angle distortion if you try going too wide. It also doesn't give you the super compressed background if you're going like 85 or more or telephoto. It's a very natural, very nice looking focal length that you can get for very reasonable price. We're gonna hop outside real quick and I'm gonna show you what they look like. If you wanna do like video outdoors, you wanna do talking head video like this, you've seen it the whole video so far. The 32 millimeter 1.4 for the Canon EFM is what we're seeing here. So you have been seeing 50 millimeter indoors the whole time. Let's hop outside real quick so I can show you how these work outdoors and just why 50 millimeter is so darn good because it's, it's fantastic. Okay. See you out there. <laughs> Welcome outside. Now we are on, uh, we're on the kit lens just for comparison's sake. So this is the Lumix J85 with its 12 to 60 kit lens. And this is the Canon M50 with its 15 to 45 kit lens. Now, what I'm trying to show you really quickly is like I said in the beginning of the video, you do normally start off with a kit lens. And while some kit lenses are great, some are, you know, they're okay. But if you want to be able to take your video quality up on a budget, Pa! We got the 50 millimeters. So we're gonna swap on the 50 millimeters so I can show you kit lens V, you know, V cheap. This one's not cheap. This one's the cheap one. Budget primes and how great they can be. So <laughs> there we go. Now we are on the prime lenses. And as you can see now, I did, if you're wondering why the footage is a little jerkier than normal, um, I'm kind of being a jerk here. I forgot my ND filter, so I'm exposing with shutter speed. You should probably not do that, but don't let that get in the way of the actual video quality. So as I said, indoors, 50 millimeter is more like what the human eye sees. So from the kit lens, the background's been compressed a little bit. I'm like not as widely distorted. Like my face should be a little flatter. It should look more like a normal human face as opposed to a wide angle lens face. And you can get that shallower depth of field. It's much easier to get if you use ND outdoors so you can maintain the 180 degree shutter rule and not be a jerk like some of us. But I definitely think that the 50 millimeter equivalent, this is a 32, this is a 25, is the best budget focal length you can find anywhere. It is just, it's versatile, it's incredibly useful. If you're doing talking head stuff, like there's almost nothing that gets better than it because it's cheap, looks great, easy to use, very small. Now again, like I mentioned in the beginning, you can get very high-end versions of the 50 millimeter, like there's a 25 millimeter 1.2 Olympus Pro lens for the Micro Four Thirds cameras. It's like 1200 bucks. Like they can get very expensive because it's such a useful and powerful and awesome focal length. And that is why I believe this to be the best budget focal length. What do you guys think? What is your favorite budget like piece of gear? What is your favorite budget lens, favorite budget focal length? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's have a discussion because I'd like to, you know, continue making budget video production videos that you guys want to see. Thanks for watching.